Amen. So thankful that God made me God's own and you are God's own. It is good to gather in the name of the Lord and to give God our praise because in spite of the craziness in our world, God still reigns supreme and God still walks with us and God still talks with us. Thankful that God calls you, God calls me friend. There is a word from the Lord today on this second Sunday of 2021 and we're going to jump right into it after we go to God together in prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, we honor you, we praise you for those men and women, those young people who have stepped up to the plate to serve as leaders in not their church, not my church, but in your church. Keep your hand upon them, help them to walk in your truth and to walk in your love. Here and now, O Lord, I stand at this sacred desk because it is preaching time. And I call upon you for preaching power. Touch me, anoint me, fill me completely, mighty God, with your Holy Spirit. Use me to stand boldly on your word and declare your truth to your people for your name's sake. Holy Spirit, use me as you see fit. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Today, I want to read from the New Testament book of 2 John. 2 John. We're going to read the entire book. It's a very short book, just one chapter. 2 John. And there you will find in 2 John chapter 1, as I read from the New Revised Standard Version. It says, the elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. And not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I was overjoyed to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we have been commanded by the Father. But now, dear lady, I ask you, not as though I were writing you a new commandment, but one we have heard from the beginning. Let us love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard it from the beginning. You must walk in it. Many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Be on your guard so that you do not lose what we have worked for, but many receive, but may receive a full reward. Everyone who does not abide in the teaching of Christ, but goes beyond it, does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Do not receive into the house or welcome anyone who comes to you and does, and does not bring this teaching. For to welcome is to participate in the evil deeds of such a person. Although I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister send you their greetings. May God bless the reading, the hearing, the understanding, but most of all, the doing of this sacred and holy word. I want to speak from the subject, walk it out walk it out. 
Anyone who has ever played any kind of sports knows that there is a difference between being injured and being hurt. See, if you're injured, that means you can no longer play. You must sit out because whatever uh, the, the pain or whatever the injury means that it's too severe for you to risk playing on it. There's injury and then there's being hurt. Injury, you cannot play. But if you are hurt, it means that you are in pain, but you are still able to fulfill your task on the field or court or whatever. Anyone who has ever played any kind of sport also knows that you've probably heard the phrase, walk it off. You're hurt, you get up, you're still in pain, and someone says, walk it off. To walk it off means to keep moving until the pain subsides and you're, all, you're, you're able to go back to, to, to playing again. I want to take that concept of walk it off and apply it to walk it out. Where that is, you are moving until you live out what it is God has called you to do. I know there's a song called Walk It Out, but we're going to put that aside. Walking, walking it out in this sense means you're going to live until you fulfill what it is God requires. John is believed to be the Apostle John, the brother of James, the son of Zebedee, was believed to have written not only the Gospel of John, but also the letters of John 1, 2, and 3. Now, these letters were written to churches in Eastern Asia Minor, which is modern-day Turkey. First John was written to address this thing that had happened in some of the Eastern uh, Asia Minor churches, and that is there were a bunch of false teachers. Some might call them antichrist because they were teaching that which went against what the apostles were sharing, what they had learned from Jesus himself. So in 1 John, uh, he, he talks about these false teachers and he talks about love and truth. And so in his second letter to the church in uh, Eastern Asia Minor, he addresses it and says, the elder, that's John, to the elect lady. Now here, John is talking about a local congregation. That's the, the lady that he's talking about. He says that, I hear, la uh, lady, that, you, that some of your children are doing the right thing. Now, I want you to take notice, he does not say all of your children. He says, some of your children are living in the truth. So this very short book, really a letter, is broken down in three parts. There's the greeting, there's uh, the body of the, the letter, which is talking about truth and love, and then there's the final greeting farewell. And the whole thing is really dealing with false teachers and walking in truth and walking in love. And, and John really wants to dig deep into it, but he says, I'm not going to put it down on pen and paper. That's not good enough. When I come to you, I'll elaborate it on it further so you'll know what it means when you have a false teacher in your midst. You'll know what it means really to walk in truth and to walk in love. Now, it's believed by many scholars, the group, these false teachers, that John was talking about uh, was an ancient group known as the Gnostics, or at least that's what modern day scholars call them, Gnostics. And Gnostics were those who believed in hidden knowledge, that they had knowledge that others did not have. The Gnostics believed that the flesh was evil. There's, there's no good in the flesh, nothing good in our fleshly body in the earth is good. It's all, all the good happens in spirit. That's what the Gnostics believe. In addition to that, 
Gnostics believed that they, as I said, had special knowledge, that they had it, and no one else could get it. And, and, and as I thought about that, I, I said, well, maybe there are some modern-day Gnostics. Maybe we don't call them Gnostics. But what if, what if those Gnostics in the first century believed that they received their special knowledge because they were online reading these fringe news outlets? that they spent all of their time watching Fox News, that they spent all of their time reading Breitbart, that they spent all of their time looking at these unfounded conspiracy theories. And because they spent all of their time reading that stuff and watching and listening to the wrong people, they had this knowledge that no one else had. What they didn't know is, what they thought was the truth was actually a lie. It was false. But they believed it so much, they were, they were so dedicated to it that they would be willing to do anything about it, that they would even be willing to take over a country. Wow. But it was all based on something false. They were reading the wrong things. They were listening to the wrong people. So it is for this reason that John says we, we need to, to walk in the truth. That's what he says, to walk in the truth. He says that there in verse 4. And here's the truth. Here is the truth that was real in the first century as much as it is real in the 21st century. And that is we live in a broken world. God created the world and it was good, but God also created human beings and gave us free will. And as a result of this, we, we sort of strayed away from what God intended. And as a result, the world is broken. There's pain. There's sin. There's so much chaos and distortion in the world. And because it's in the world, it also impacts this very nation that we're a part of. That's the truth. And so here, here, here's another truth. That on Wednesday, January 6th, terrorists, not protesters, that, that's a lie to say protesters, terrorists, anarchists, stormed the capital of the United States of America. They broke through the blockade that the Capitol Police had. And, and in one instance, when they first knocked it over, they even knocked over a police officer. Wow. Ran her over. And you know what happened? Nothing. They kept on moving forward. They, they, they went to the Capitol, and, and as they were breaking glass and breaking doors, you could even see some of them taking pictures with the people who were supposed to be protecting the Capitol. Terrorists. These terrorists stormed through the Capitol, taking pictures and taking sacred artifacts and even breaking into Speaker Pelosi's office, taking pictures, putting their feet on the desk and stealing documents from her office. They were destroying the Capitol. And here's also the truth. Even though they were terrorists, even though they were destructive, they were treated like peaceful protesters. That's the truth. If we have to walk in the truth, I'm sorry if this offends someone, but I have to tell the truth because John teaches us that we're supposed to walk in it. And these people were treated like peaceful protesters even though they had caused damage 
And after it was all said and done, five lives were lost. Here, it, because I have to walk in the truth, let me also share this truth with you. If those anarchists have been black or brown, I'm convinced that things would have gone down a lot differently. It would not have been the same if those anarchists had been black or brown. How do I know? How do I know this truth? Well, this summer, when the Black Lives Matters protested peacefully in Washington, D.C., the police were already there, fully armed in riot gear. That's the truth. That's the truth that we live in. And if it offends you, I'm sorry, but John teaches we're supposed to walk in the truth. And because Amen. of that, that means I have Amen. to tell the truth. You also want to know that you want to know more about the truth? All of this started because they were led and provoked by some so-called leaders. Yep. Unfortunately, yep. one of them is from the state of Missouri. Come on now. One of them Preach. is supposed to represent the people of Missouri as he's throwing a power fist yep. to yep. these people, Preach. to these terrorists. Yes. One of them Preach. used to be the mayor of New York and he said it needs to be trial by combat. One of them was so, so responsible that even Twitter says, you can't use us no more. Come on. That's Amen. the truth. Amen. Preach. These folk were led by a lie. Yes. And the people who told them that lie were not thinking about what's best for the greater good. They were thinking about what's best for themselves. Because as these rioters were storming the Capitol, the senator from Missouri was sending out letters trying to raise money. That's the truth. That is the honest to God truth. And because John says we're supposed to walk in it, that means I need to tell it. Even if it offends some folk. Don't say that. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, it says, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Right. Amen. And, and if that's what we're supposed to live by, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What happened on Wednesday didn't fit that at all. That was not the way to express your outrage. It was not the truth, but it was a lie. And you know why it wasn't life? Because five lives were lost. Now here's also the truth that we're supposed to walk in. The truth is that as followers of Jesus, we are supposed to live by a completely different standard. We are supposed to look at how the world lives and we're actually supposed to move in a different direction. That's the truth. That often we will be going against the grain, that we will be going against society because if you look at the life of Jesus, that's the truth that he lived that Jesus hung out and worked with and worked for those people who were stuck on the margins of society, those outcasts, those who were stepped on, stepped over. And because Jesus walked in that truth as a follower of his, we're supposed to walk in that same truth. That means we're concerned and work for and work with those that society say that, that you have no place at the table. Walking in truth. But not only does John say we're supposed to walk in truth, but he says we're supposed to walk in love. 
and, and, and John says this isn't a new commandment because Jesus gave it a while back. It was on Thursday before he was crucified on the cross. He said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. That's the new commandment. And this is more than just a mindset. This is more than, than something we're just supposed to say or read. This is a way of life. And so the question, the question that I'm sure you're asking is, how can we actually love everyone? I don't know everyone. I don't see everyone. So how can we live or walk in this truth that Jesus says we're supposed to walk in love? Well, well the, way, the way that you walk in love for all people, it deals with at least two things. At least two things. Justice for everyone. Justice for everyone. That means, that means if, if, if I'm treated a certain way and, and, and I'm, I'm put in prison, that this ought to be universal for everyone. But if this group of people, if they're able to get away with something, that means I ought to be able to get away with it. Yep, yep. That's yep. justice for all, whatever that, that is, and, and, and equity. Equity is not equality, as I've said many times before, and, and I'm sure many of you know equity and equality are not the same thing. Equality means you give everyone the exact same thing. Equity means that those who need the most, you give them the most. Amen. Those Amen. who don't need as much, then you don't give them as much. You give according to the need. That's how you love everyone. When we promote and work for and even fight for peacefully, fight for justice and equity for all and the well-being of every man, woman, and child, regardless of race, creed, or color. That's how you walk in love. That's how we're supposed to walk in love. John says to walk in truth and to walk in in love and then he gets down to it and he and he says um, that that uh, these folk these people who are not telling this truth these antichrists you know when we think of antichrist we think of this the Satan but in the New Testament antichrist is, is is referred to as someone who's a false teacher someone who's teaching a lie and and these Gnostics were teaching that Jesus did not come in the flesh. You know why? Because they believed that all flesh was evil. So John says, don't, don't listen to them if they tell you that Jesus did not come into the, the flesh because to say that means that they are denying all the good that Jesus did on earth. That that, that really didn't happen, that Jesus did not heal folk, that Jesus did not teach, that he did not restore the sight to the blind. To deny Jesus in the flesh is to deny all the good work that Jesus did on earth. It's to deny what we read in the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 when Jesus says, I came to set people free. And, and here's the problem that the United States of America has faced and is still facing. This is the truth that the United States has been unable to separate Christianity, what is true Christianity, from the United States. They, many people believe that it is the exact same thing. So when you are against the United States, people think that you're against Christianity because they cannot separate the two. And what is also the truth is, that this nation, in order to justify slavery, they focused on the soul and not the body. The same thing that these Gnostics did. Deny the flesh and focus on the spirit. And so in this country, you've heard uh, many so-called Christians talk about having a personal conversion experience, that it's about you and your personal relationship with the Lord. And while doing so, they are suggesting and even saying that you ignore the social aspect. 
what is hurting and, and, and really limiting those people on the margins of society. It's almost been like you're either going to focus on the soul or you're going to focus on the body. But if we're really walking in the truth and love of Jesus, Jesus focused on the soul, but he also focused on the body. He also focused on what was going on in society. When Jesus said, follow me, that was addressing the soul as well as the body. Otherwise, why in the world, if Jesus didn't care about what was going on in the world, why would he say, I came to set people free? Why would he bother healing folk if the body did not matter? That's a lie, and we can no longer teach it, talk about it, promote it. We have to walk in the truth. It's not either or, it's both and. That our Lord is concerned about your soul, absolutely, but the Lord is also concerned about your physical well-being. So John says, to allow these people into the church to allow them to come in and to teach those things will lead the church astray well unfortunately these folk have been in the church since 1619 that's why the church in the united states has gone so far away from what i believe god is calling us to do because we've allowed these false teachers into the church for centuries but I believe we have to do what John says. We cannot allow them a place of honor. We cannot allow them a place to teach. We need to separate the false from the truth. Well, in spite of all of this, in spite of the lies, in spite of the inequity in our world, in spite of the injustice, you and I, as followers of Jesus, we have to walk in truth and we have to walk in love. We have no choice. That Amen. is the commandment. And Amen. if we are to be obedient, we must walk in it. You know what I really like? What I really like is uh, when it says you have to walk in it. John, that's what John says, to walk in it. Walk in it. Why am I saying that over and over again? Because it just struck me. It struck me that, that he says, walk in it. Um, did you know that when you walk in something long enough, even when you're no longer walking in it, it will be on you. I know, I know. About 75% of you all missed that. When you walk in something long enough, even yeah. when you stray away from it, it right. will be on you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So Amen. you walk in the truth, and when we go astray, which as human beings we do from time to time, even when we stray away from the truth, if you've been walking in it, that truth, will be on you when you go away. You don't believe me? Let me give you an example that you might be able to relate to. Has anyone ever walked in mud? You're walking yeah. in mud. And you already know, once you're walking in mud, that your shoes and maybe the bottom of your pants, they're going to be covered in mud. You already know that, so you're walking in mud. But here's the thing about it. Even when you're no longer walking in that mud, when you walked out of the mud, guess what? That mud is still on you. So what I'm saying to you, walk in the truth. Walk in the truth. And when you stray away, that truth, will be on you so I the, the, the Bible teaches that I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me walk in it and then that will be on you yet you you are more than a conqueror walk in it and it will be on you greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world walk in it and it will be on you the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. Walk in it and it will be on you. You shall run and not 
be weary. You shall walk and not be faint. Walk in it and it will be on you. With God, all things are possible. Walk in it and it will be on you. If God is for you, I like to change this scripture around. If God is for you, who can be against you? That's what it says. But I'm sorry, I'm going to take some liberty and change that scripture around. If God is for you, who cares who's against you? Walk in it and it will be on you. Let us, following the examples of John and in Jesus, Walk in truth, walk in love, and truth and love will be on you. Amen? Amen. We want to open up the doors of the church. And the first and the most important invitation that you will hear in your life is to say yes to the Lord, our Savior. Yes. Jesus, I want to walk in your truth. I want to walk in your love. If you're really willing to make that profession today, we want you to reach out to us. Reach out to us. You can call the church office at 816-444-5588 or email us at care at sjumckc.org. The second invitation, if you're looking for a church home, no matter where you are in the world, if you want to connect with St. James as your faith community, we would love to have you. We would love to have someone else to push us, to encourage one another to walk in truth and to walk in love. You can also reach out to us, call the church office, 816-444-5588, or email us at care at sjumckc.org. The doors of the church are open and we invite you to connect with us today.